My grand... Sorry. My mother wants grandchildren so bad, she's willing to rent them. Though truly, she looks to her three children, myself, my brother, my sister, each of us a piece of this river that runs through our family, each of us a current strong enough to carry on a name. Now my sister, she can't help her because, well, she can't conceive. You see, when she was a little girl, she had internal complications. Two operations had both her ovaries removed. But there's a river that runs through her that carries the dreams of the children that she so desires but will never know. My mother's given up on me. I don't have that maternal instinct. And it's funny how something like a really fucked up past could still make you a lousy parent in the present. But there is a river that runs through me that carries the dreams of the kind of father that, that maybe one day I could be. So for now, my brother, well, he's the last hope. Now, he's married, and him and his wife, they've tried to have children, but with the promise of every pregnancy, his wife would miscarry until the last time. Now, six months passed, and everything was fine. The river, it was growing, taking shape, forming inside a little boy to be named Max, to be named after my mother's father, who passed 15 years prior. But Max, he, he came three months too soon, too small. He could fit in the palm of your hand, a perfect fit. If you closed your eyes and imagined as you held your hand up close against the glass to his incubator. And my mother had a grandchild for five days. And she sat with my brother's wife, looking, listening, longing for any signs of life, lullabying little Max through the hot glass, night after night under the constant canopy of fluorescent hospital lights. But... But Max passed. He passed 15 years to the day of his namesake, and then he was buried on the exact same schedule. And when he went into the ground, a letter was placed with him inside his tiny coffin, slightly smaller than a shoebox. It was a letter explaining, apologizing for the things that he'd never do, how the good Lord gives to you and then takes away, and to please not be sad, because you know, Sometimes some questions, they just don't get answered. Sometimes some dreams are just dreams. And sometimes it, it feels like there's no God as this river runs through its current strong enough to carry on a name. Sometimes, though, only inside the dreams of the living as this river grows and runs and flows to carry the dead back home. And so sadly, it seems these days that all my family can do is just stand on the shores of that river and wave as they go. Blending and mending the bending beginning, ascending, defending my head from the impending rending that ascending wave of a brave new world. The pound you found and sound is mound and muddled the difference between boy and girl. You gripped a slip from tip or lip and now you are free from time and tired happenings. For it is the body that binds us up in eons. We are all eagerly ebbing in an e issued every evening from the newsstand. Two bodies drawn for us in freehand, something that should have been hidden behind your homeland, under the police van, between fruit stands, through smoke strands, in a priest stand. No, 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 no. We have in the time for the falsetto spondle just to have their story smuggled to a new parish. We are all in the same round pin, a den without refuge, held in by skin-covered walls and bars carved from the bones of Mount Vogue. However, these physical fetters are not natural tethers that extend up from the roots of oak trees, shackling us to one or the other, a sister or a brother. It is our mind, judgment, Athena, choices, voice inside softening skulls. That seraph of the soul clutches the key to freedom known as knowing, feeling hormonal, and accusing every other of insanity. Vanity is the fact tying us to the rack of self-deprivation, which of course will lead us to a guillotine, a social inoculation. Never in our initial hour will we find our potential power of conception. We must first admit to the degradation, manipulation, capitalization of the word man to represent our kind of humanity. So here it is. This poem is her feminism, feminism, the prism through which I saw this syllogism. If half humanity doesn't swing between its fleshy thighs, and love's engulfing all of us mad with vernal blood, then we are all in the same elated nightmare which is to be. However, the question still remains, why is there pain acceptable? 
To this day, the surveys say that the slave driver of these impossible shadows is obsessed with consuming itself. An industry of media made of metal images made edible through emaciated layers upon layers, all irresponsible carcasses of the format that form formal radiation, all falling out of the green glowing tube, the blue laminate bandset, the red bud neon tripping up onto the cloud hanging over the city. Stop absorbing these morbid shapes that leave your heads punctured and gaped without regret. Eat your television sets before they devour you, a homogenized downtown sacrificial death mask. We are separated into two certain sections of sex because together we're all wet, sparking electricity every time we come in contact with the machine. Secular security and heredity and religious dependence on heaven sent hymns hone a future suture to an inequality, which is of course unchanging. A stillborn and a nothing more than myself. Again, I ask you once more, what is my responsibility? How am I supposed to be me and consider that with dignity if I'm the winner of both my race and of my sex? A notion that leaves a bad taste of rotten mint juleps and tulips from the garden to the west that I left when I was a boy looking for a place to go. This poem is yet to come to an end because I've yet to find a reason to end it. This poem is yet to come to an end because I've yet to see every kind of body that it could fit into. This poem is yet to come to an end because I've yet to believe in anything linear. You didn't even notice the hair grew back. <laughs> Before we do this, give it up for Robin Bateman for taking care of that. And now, we decide which of these two poets won that fucking round and move on to a second round. Who's it gonna be? You decide. Was it Josh Lubin? <laughs> or was it Till Gwynn? Thank you and good night to Josh Lubin and welcome Till into our second.